Okay, so picking up right where we left off in the previous video, we created a script that would be used to modify the particle system. First, we use constants just to make the conversion work correctly, and that is going from the values we plugged into the inspector to actually having those values be override, overridden in the script. Then what we did is we started by creating the fire radius variable. Fire radius was used to replace the constant for the radius, which then now allows us to change this over time. Okay, so that catches us up to where we were in the last video. In this video, what we're going to do is we had said that as the radius increases, the density of the particles decrease. Why? Because the same amount are being emitted, but over a greater radius. That's pretty straightforward. If the area is increasing, but the rate is not, then uh, the overall density is going to be less. And so it's not going to look the same. As, as you saw, as it ran, it started to kind of break apart. So that means as the fire radius increases, then the emit rate must increase too. So that's this number here. So this is now going to be replaced with a variable. So let's add public int, and this has to be an int for the emit rate. So public int, and we'll call this emit vol for volume, and we'll start with that 20 number that we begin with. We come down here, replace that with the new variable, and let's run it just to make sure we didn't break anything because typically that's what you should do before. If you replace a constant with a variable, make sure doing so didn't break anything before you start getting into your calculations. Okay. So now what we want to do is now we want this number to change over time. So first we said that this was really too large to begin with. So we'll run it one more time. Yeah, probably still a little bit too dense, but that's okay. We'll stick with that for now. So now what we need is that as this is increased, the fire radius, we now need this to be increased by a corresponding amount. So as you can see, if you want this to have a consistent appearance, that kind of, um, you certainly can try to calculate it out. Uh, doesn't necessarily work as you'd want it to because there is a random element to it. But let's see, if we take that approach, this increases by, so the radius is increasing by, it's 0.05, but as a percent, it's 1 14th because it starts at 0.7. You can see it over here on the side. So that would suggest that we need the emit volume to increase by 1 14th, which is a problem because this uses a float, so it can use a decimal where this is an int. But let's take that as a beginning place. So 10% would be 1.5, and half of that would be uh, 0.75. So you're looking at 2.25, um, rounded up. So we'll make this change by 2. So as fire radius increases, emit volume will plus equals 2. In other words, as we said, this will go up by 2 since we can't use 2.25. Now, as I said, you can try to calculate it out. That's one of the reasons why the calculation doesn't necessarily work. Kind of apples and oranges. One is a decimal, one is uh, an integer. But you should be able to get it close.
So now, previously, as this grew, it really broke apart. Now, one of the other issues is hitting that max amount that we're talking about. And that is the uh, there's a max amount of particles that, that can be on the screen. So if this grows out big enough, what's going to happen is you're going to get uh, basically a break where you're going to have this um, horizontal break where it can't... Uh, create any more particles because it's hit the max that can be on the screen at one time for this one particle system. That actually worked out pretty good. Now, obviously, the bottom is an issue, but the bottom is an issue for a couple reasons. This is getting closer and closer to the camera. So since it's getting close to the camera, it's really hard to maintain that fidelity. Um, there's various things you can do about that. So part of this is simply because of proximity. Now, what we're going to do next is, just as it's getting wider, probably should get taller, too. And so if we want it to get taller, that would be this one, the lifetime. In other words, how long did this particle last? Now, to be clear, there are a couple ways you could do this. If you increase the speed, then it'll get taller, too. But I'm not sure if you'd really want to do that. It would it you might get the effect that you want by increasing the particle speed, or you might not. So again, there's no absolute right or wrong way. It's, there's a lot of artistic license being used as far as how do you want it to visually appear. But just keep in mind that uh, you can either have the particle last longer, or you can have the speed be faster. We're going to go with having the particle lifetime longer. And again, eventually we're probably going to hit that upper number that we set. We did put it up at 3,000, so we might be okay. But obviously, if the particle is staying on the screen for a longer period of time, and we're emitting more and more particles, then you're going to have an exponential increase in how many particles are on the screen at any given time. So you might eventually hit that limit that you set. So... This needs to be a variable now. So you can see the pattern. We put the constants in place first to make sure everything worked, and now we're replacing them with variables. So this one can be a float, though. So public float, and we'll call this lifetime and dur for duration. And it starts at 1.0f. We'll save that. And we will put that here. So that is lifetime. There it is. And again, since we just changed a constant to a variable, let's make sure we didn't break anything. I don't have it memorized, but I think that's about the height that it was. All right, so now that we have changed the constant to a variable, we've replaced it. Now we just modify that variable. So lifetime duration plus equals, let's do point O one. So that means it would take a hundred of these to increase it by one second in total duration. That might get a little bit out of hand, but let's see. Again, this isn't meant to be absolute. This is meant to show you how you can do it, and then you can plug in your own numbers. Oh, I got an error message. For 28.3, I didn't put it in a semicolon, so. Sorry, and I forgot to put the F there. 
So, fortunately, this explicitly says add suffix f. So, it tells you exactly what's wrong and exactly how to fix it. Kind of a rarity for errors, but this one definitely tells you what's wrong and how to fix it, and so I was able to fix it. Could edit it out, but sometimes it's good to be able to see what kind of error messages come up and why. There we go. Edit uh, the error went away. So I put the mouse at the top of the flames, and actually you can see the flames are indeed going higher and higher. Yeah, that top definitely looks more wild than before. So I'm pretty sure that's working. Yeah, this is, you can definitely see a much larger orange band in the middle here. I don't think we really saw that before. And see how much this is breaking up? It's breaking up, again, because it's taller. So it's like I said before, that as you change uh, one attribute, you may find yourself having to go back and change another attribute. So we thought we had the right volume, but now that they last longer, the volume looks wrong. And so we'll probably have to go back and change that again. And also, you might this might not work in a linear manner. You may find that you might actually have to do little steps where you increase by 0.01, but then 0.02, things like that. So let's see. We have the duration, don't really need to change speed. We have the radius, we have the amount. So I'm thinking that that's just about everything that I wanted to change for this particular example. Again, the last video was about putting this into place, putting the script into place, explain how it works. This one, when we're actually doing the conversion. So I suppose since probably fairly short video, what we can do, and this is where things get a little bit messier because this, the volume has to increase by an integer where the other ones are increasing by fractions. So it may not work the way that you want it to. So you may actually have to decouple this one. So right now, everything is being done on every half a second. Maybe you have the volume increase every second instead of every half second, things like that. So maybe you'd actually have a second timer. You'd have, you have time var for this and then time var two for the volume. But for now, we'll bump it up to three. So we just increased the volume. No error messages. Still looks pretty good there. This middle range looks good. Bottom starts to break down here, but again, part of that has to do with proximity. And there's a few things you can do. You can always put like smoke at the bottom. You can also have these start as smaller. Just as this ends as a small particle, you could also start it. And there we go. That's kind of the breaking point where it starts to fall apart. So in this case, it seems that the volume did not increase enough. But again, if you take a linear approach where it changes the same amount by the same interval, that is the same interval of time, you may find it to be too much at first, but in that case, not enough. So we'll double it, we'll go to six and see what happens. But again, if you have multiple fires, you really need to think about the impact on performance is it's not just a maximum of 3,000 for this one instance. What if you have two, three, four, five fires? Again, maybe you're doing a firefighting game. So you have one fire in one corner of the room, another fire somewhere else. See, like that, I think, really looks kind of blurred out to begin with.
All right, I think we've gone about as far as we can really go with this particular example without getting into much more complex math. Not that complex, but like I said, right now this is changing by the same amount um, for every interval. What you could do is, like I said, there could be a separate uh, interval. In fact, surprisingly, this doesn't look like it's scaling out really well, that this number would need to, rather than being linear, it need to be more exponential, that the emit volume would have to increase, say, by 3 at first, and then 6, then 9, then 12, that kind of thing. So maybe I should say by a factor, not uh, an exponent. Not exponentially, but by a factor. So anyways, like I said, don't want to really get into the more uh, complex math, but that's one thing that you could do. And that is rather than have, like I said, rather than have this increase by a constant, the variable would be increased by a variable. So now, now you're twice removed from a constant. So rather than having a constant here, and rather than having a variable that increases by a constant, you have a variable that increases by another variable. And that's how crazy some of this can be. And, and, and that's why you have teams of people working just on uh, some of these effects, some of these um, uh, visual effects, such as particle systems. And when you think about the application, fires, exploding, explosions, uh, smoke, mist, um, and you can actually have particle systems for things that may not seem like particles, because right now we're using very small images. You could actually have, like, say, a picture of a rock and have, like, the rock exploding out, too. So it's not just these kind of nondescript particles. You can actually have fully drawn images being treated like particles. So I guess that's about it for this video. Not very long, but the whole idea was to convert... Uh, the constants into variables and look at some ways that you can do it like I like I said with this this particular variable to keep the fidelity either a you wouldn't let it get bigger um, beyond a, a certain size or B you would need to create something more effective than this linear increase that you may actually need to create a calculation where the increase increases so I guess that's just about it for this one if you have any questions let me know